Hi, everyone. And introducing Rebecca Deer, Headmistress of Badminton School. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Thank you. I'm delighted to join your webinar today and to share with you um, news of our school and stories of our school here at Badminton. So let me tell you a bit more about Badminton School. We're an independent day and boarding school. We're about 50% boarding through the school and we take girls aged 3 to 18, but boarders from age 9. We are located in the southwest of England. We are um, a lovely campus school on the edge of the city of Bristol, which is a nice historic city. And uh, we are very well connected to rail and road network. And one of the really important things you should know about Badminton is that we have been having international borders at our school for 160 years now. And so we're very well versed in looking after them. And that includes looking after them from the minute they arrive at any UK airport, picking them up, taking them back to school and caring for them until their return flight takes off back home. So we give a fully incorporated travel service as well. So I think the best way to understand the school is to have a glimpse of the campus and to hear some of the voices from around that campus. So what I'd like to do is to show you a short video about our school. One Story, Four Chapters. We really feel this strongly at Badminton. So One Story, that's Badminton School, four chapters, that's nursery, junior, senior, and then sixth form. What holds them together is those common threads, curious, confident, courteous, those things that we hold dear at every level. 200, then we've got minus 200. What might we expect for the next one? Zero. Everyone is friends, so I know a lot of people from younger years and older years. They teach you while making you happy at the same time. We have a really good range of lessons and sports clubs. I started to push myself out of my comfort zone. Okay, what should we do for the first? I was thinking I drove the tent. I put up the tent. Yeah. I put up the tent. Yeah. Happy to say we are some of the upper sixth languages students and we just wanted to tell you why we think it's important to study languages. Open your eyes, what can you see around? Okay, you've got your foot facing where it needs to be. You've got a nice high elbow ready. One touch, one touch to stop. It does have one shot, because one has two. So the, the, yeah. Yeah. But that's the thing with these, like saying full out to show and actually stops making sense once we get to here. Every girl at Badminton sees everything as an opportunity to have a British boarding school experience. They let their imagination run wild as to what they want to do with their future. And that's the attitude that we want them to take into the world. So if it ends in an O or an OR, it can change to a feminine ending if the noun it's describing is feminine. Okay, if it ends in any other letter. B, okay. Jump. Okay, stay still, don't move. 134 for later. Since it's such small classes, the teachers get to know us. What do you want to ask about this picture? In my old school I didn't do most of these subjects and I didn't use all of the equipment we're using now. Boiler, boiler, quick, we need one pack per group. So, focus on that. Although I'm a new student here, I've just came this September, but I really enjoy this place. Badminton School. So, what more can I tell you about the school? Well, we like to think we provide the best preparation for girls living and working in a global society, which is an enormous promise. But the thing is, we really feel we can do that for two important reasons. First and foremost, because we are a small and strong community. And we know that by living together in our small and strong community, this makes a comfortable and confident place 
where the girls can really explore and push the boundaries of their understanding. You see, to learn, you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And so, in order to do that, you have to be in a place where you feel able to do so. Here, because the girls know each other so well, they know their teacher so well, they really can make themselves vulnerable and push the limits of their understanding. Secondly, we believe that learning doesn't just take place in the classroom. And so our whole way of learning extends beyond the fantastic lessons and into our ways of life. So let me tell you a bit more about that. So we really want our education, as I said, not just to be in the classroom, but as a way of life. We want to teach the girls to be curious throughout their life, to really see that every opportunity is there for them. We want them to see learning as fun, and it doesn't matter if it's in the sports field or the science lab. We want them to take a hands-on approach. And so we do just that. We make sure that they really get involved in learning. That might take the form of actually using their modern foreign languages like Spanish and German to perform plays to the rest of the school, to the parents, to the local community. We can't travel abroad every day, but we can put into practice the language we're learning. The same happens with our science. The girls take their scientific experiment experimentation and push the boundaries. They've written and had published articles in national and international journals, and they've taken their science demonstrations across England and even across Europe, working with partners like the Institute of Physics and the CERN laboratories. By doing this, they really get to understand if that subject is for them and if they really want to explore it more. I've already alluded to the fact that people have to feel confident and comfortable to learn. But that means not just providing a great space, but a team around the children to make sure that it's functioning fully. And we have that with our house staff, our tutors, our wellbeing coordinator, and so much more. On campus, we have a health centre with nurses and visiting doctors. We also have our sports centre with a range of physio and fitness experts to make sure the girls know how to care for themselves. Our view is that we shouldn't just look after the girls, but we should teach the girls to look after themselves. We want them to feel that their well-being is important to them and knowing how to manage it is something that they should be doing throughout their lives. So now let me tell you a bit more about boarding at badminton. We have about a 50-50 split of boarders and day girls at badminton. Every boarding house has a housemistress, a deputy housemistress and a team of resident tutors who are on hand. We have three boarding houses on site. Our junior boarding house is called Bartlett and that goes from 8 years old through to 12, 13. And that's quite a small house, around 30 girls are in that house and we're stood in, in the sitting room now of this house. It has a really homely feel. I love coming up here to see the girls. We ensure that before they go to bed at night they've got their uniform and things laid out ready for school the next day and their bags packed. And these are good habits that they then carry through as they get older. We then move on to the middle age house, so that's years 9, 10 and 11. And actually Sanderson, which is the middle house, has two floors and each floor has a separate house mistress, deputy house mistress and resident tutors within it. Again, there's a lot of hands-on pastoral care, but it is a much, much bigger building and that has 88 girls in there, so it's, so it's a significant jump. Finally we have our sixth form house and that has girls in lower six and upper six and is very much a sort of pre-U experience. They're able to do a bit more independent cooking, that sort of thing. The boarders in Bartlett and Sanderson leave the houses in the morning and come to school. So it's very much like being a day girl, you can't nip back and get your pencil case or your PE kits or anything like that. And then that changes in the sixth form, so when the girls come to the sixth form, the house is open, so the day girls will arrive on the morning, they have their own study spaces and lockers, and obviously the boarders have their bedrooms upstairs, and they will come down, so they're very much mixed together. For me, the pastoral care underpins everything that we do here because if a child is not happy and well within themselves then they're never going to perform to the best of their abilities. And also we teach them about self-care because it is that sort of longer term view of getting them ready for university and the wider world.
so I hope you could hear most of that. Sorry, there was some um, stopping and starting at my end. I hope it came through smoothly at yours. So what more can I tell you about badminton? Well, um, we really um, feel the need to get the girls to look beyond the immediate. And as I said, our education is very much about the whole thing. And that doesn't just mean employing their education to put it into practical sense for the subject itself, but to think about their future and what they should contribute to the world. We really want these people to have the idea that they will go out and make a difference in the world. And that starts absolutely in the immediate vicinity of the school, looking around them, seeing how they can help and be helpful, and then looking beyond the walls of the schools for local community and indeed nationally and globally. We really want the girls to be curious, confident and courteous citizens of the world, not just of Babington School. We want them to be making a contribution and understand what's going on in the world. So we really encourage collaboration between the girls, but also a sort of a charitable sense that they should join in and make a difference. And there are lots of clubs and societies and, and forums for talking about doing things and getting involved with doing things. And we know that that is obviously great for the world and great for the future, but also we believe it's great for the girls because it stops them focusing entirely on themselves and the work that they're doing. And that's an important well-being strand is to look beyond yourself and to put things into a bigger context. So although it is a good thing to do, we also find it's, it's good for themselves and it does make them have a more positive experience at the school. On this journey, we are teaching the girls in the same way to try the same things. But what we're not doing is teaching them all to be the same person. We do want them to lead as themselves. When your daughter comes to badminton, she won't be put in a cookie cutter mould to be a badmintonian. What we're looking to do is to get to understand every girl, to understand what her aims and ambitions are and to enable them, but also to find out what her weaknesses are and what challenges her so that we can help her with those, help her lift them up so that they never hold her back. And at the end of that, she should be confident and ready to meet the world. What I love about badminton is that every girl is an individual. And so when they leave the school, they are very much their best selves, but very much themselves. They go on to a whole range of studies, everything from music conservatoires to medicine, and no two years are the same. But what they do do is they go on to thrive. We find badminton girls tend to stick to their university courses, succeed on them, and go on to thrive in what they aim to do. And that's really important for us that we just don't get them over the hurdle of leaving school successfully, but we follow up in their lives to see them do well. Um, obviously, you're very lucky working with mentor who know British boarding schools well and can guide you through the process. If you want any more specific information about badminton, you can, of course, visit our website. We hope to see you soon and thank you for taking the time to listen.